Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Miles Memories Weekly, episode 69. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and warming experiences from the week. Now you might think to yourself, Jay, you put out three interviews a week and you stream every single night. How could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I was proven wrong by Games Workshop. They came out with a bunch of new products for their skirmish, their box games, and uh, I was not expecting basically anything on this list. But let's quickly go through all of the things that they showed off, starting with Warcry. Uh, I don't play Warcry, but I've heard nothing but excellent things about Warcry, and all of the warbands that they've come out with have been pretty darn cool. I was super tempted by the last box that came with the spider folks, the, the spider men, if you will, the, um, the Conan the Barbarians and like a really cool um, mining setup, like a weird chaotic mine shaft with rivers of molten material. It was really cool. And they've shown off a new war cry box with the Rotmire Creed, so the, the interesting thing about Warcry, Warcry is set in the Age of Sigmar universe, but it's kind of humans versus humans, and they're humans who are kind of, they're not aligned with the Chaos Gods, but they have been touched by the Chaos Gods. And so they're not like, the Rotmire Creed are the Nurgle people, but they're not necessarily like, you know, all in for Papa Nurgle, it's just kind of their way of life is Nurgle. And so they're fun models. They showed off one of these guys before, they, they're standing on stilts, presumably, so like they don't either so that they don't leave footprints like they're sneaky ninjas or they want to stay up out of the water. Although you think you'd still want long stilts to do that, but they're pretty cool. I really like the bamboo aesthetic they've got going on. And I really like that the, the HQ or the sergeant, he's got this mask that just makes him completely faceless. And that is a really cool look that I don't think is taken advantage of as much as it could be or should be, but. These guys are neat, but I think my favorite is the other half of the box, the Horns of Hash Hut Warband. And these guys, I love the guys who have this kind of like bull skull hat on top of their helmets. I love those guys. I don't know if I love the normal fellas who don't have masks or cool armor or anything, I don't know if this is a situation of like those are prisoners with jobs or if they're just they haven't they haven't gone up through the ranks high enough to be allowed to wear the cool hats. But I like these guys. They're really, really cool. And what's interesting about them is the Horns of Hashut. That uh, that name Hashut, that was the gods, the, the god of fire, greed and tyranny that the old chaos dwarves worshipped. So it's kind of interesting to bring that little little nugget of lore back into Age of Sigmar. So I like I like those guys. They're really cool, and I think they would paint up really nice. Um, there's a color, Hash Hut Copper. I don't know if that's the current Games Workshop color or what's one of the previous ones, but like they're they've kind of got that coppery, bronzy look, and I think that they would be really fun to paint. Ah, and the new Warcry book that comes in the big box, Warband Tome, Rot and Ruin. It's got both sergeants on the cover. And it totally looks like two fellas walking into Comic-Con <laughs> in full getup. It, uh, it just looks a little silly. Especially since like usually when they do these versus things, they're like in mid combat. One of them's throwing a punch and the other one's like stabbing. But these guys are just chilling. They're just chilling next to each other. They're, they're in line at the food court. <laughs> they're going to get a hot dog. Uh, it's really fun. But yeah, this box looks cool. It's, it's not speaking to me as much as the previous box, but who knows, maybe the next one will be even more enticing. And speaking of enticing, there was a new miniature for Necromunda Ash Wastelands, and it is the Goliath, it's a Goliath motorbike with treads and a giant grinder in the front. And it looks pretty good. The colors that they chose for it kind of make it look like a 90s Ninja Turtle toy, but I could see like if you painted it more Mad Max covered in dust and dirt and grit, I feel like it would really start to look really, really cool. It's got two different like options. You can either build it with a giant rubber tire in the front, which looks awesome, or you can just have it not have the tire and it looks empty, kind of like the tire was shot out and is missing. It looks really weird. I think they were going for like, that's the, the teeth of the grinder and I guess as this travels along, it scoops up 
dirt and or dust. I don't know, ash wastelands. It doesn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think. I think you, you go with gluing in the tire. It, it's almost like an. It was like an afterthought. They're like, you know, you know, it kind of looks cool without that tire. Maybe we should just call that a feature. Kind of like on old Lego sets where they would show off the really cool X-wing, and then on the back of the box they would show off like three like a, a not very good looking robot in a not very good looking spaceship that you can build with all of the same Lego pieces. It kind of reminds me of that. Like the tire is the look. It's it's what it's supposed to have. But if you leave off the tire, it's, it's still sort of something. You might like that. But yeah, I like that motorbike and it's probably going to be expensive as hell because the, uh, the, the train, the Ash Wastelands train thing that they showed off is so expensive. It's redonkulous. Like, I thought it would be kind of expensive, but because it, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. You've got the turrets and you've got like the big front of the train and then you've got like cargo wagons, but they're selling it all separately, which is a bizarre choice. I mean, it's almost makes sense to sell the trailer separately because you might want to buy a bunch of trailers to tack on the back, but it's it's redonkulous. $187 makes it like one of the most expensive vehicles you can buy and it's not that big. Like the Stompa is massive and it's cheaper. The Bane Blade is massive and it's cheaper. And then you've got this little Necromunda wagon. It's so expensive, but I don't know. Necromunda is weird. Necromunda is really weird because number one, the, the gang boxes that you can buy are $47, which is expensive, but it's not Games Workshop expensive. Like they, they'll sell you 10 Space Marines for $60 and the 10 Necromunda, Necromunda gangers, which arguably look way cooler, like the Goliaths, the Eschers, the Delac, 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 House Delac. Those guys look super badass, tons of detail, tons of customizability, $47. Like it's, it's all, it's kind of, it's not as much as Games Workshop could charge you, but uh, it's yeah, Necromon is weird. Necromon is weird. It looks really cool though. Moving on to Warhammer Underpants. They came out with a new war band, the Hexbane Hunters. These guys remind me a lot of the Witch Hunter from Curse City. There was like one little model that everybody wanted because it looked like it would be a perfect stand-in for a 40K Inquisitor. But this is kind of a whole little war band based on that one model. And it's really cool. I remember the 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 under the underworld's uh, vampire court is like was like the thing, like seven or eight people painted it up for Golden Demon this year. And I could I could sort of see these guys showing up as like another little little bouquet of, of really cool models because they've got a really nice attitude. You got the wit, they got the hunter, you got the guy with the crossbow and a spooky mask. You kind of have the rogue with her little pistol. And then you just got this big ogre guy with a fire ax and then two puppos. It's really nice. It's really cool. Underpants looks like a really, really cool game. I've heard that it's like, cause it's played on a hex based grid that's fairly small. And so I feel like in terms of Games Workshop games, it's probably the smallest and most portable. And I definitely think there's something to that. It's kind of bridges the gap between big 40, big 40 K um, army games and tiny and maybe smaller than skirmish games moving into more board game. And that's kind of nice. It's nice to have the options. And speaking of not big army games, Blood Bowl. We got a new Blood Bowl team and it is the Amazon, the Kara Temple Harpies. And these models are nice. They're just nice. Everything, everything for Blood Bowl is nice. It's just a fun, silly game. And I really, I really dig it. I own Blood Bowl. I own the old Blood Bowl. I don't know if I need the new Blood Bowl. Chat, if anybody plays, uh, if anybody plays Blood Bowl, can I play Blood Bowl with all of the old stuff and the old rule book and the old um, board? Or do I have to get a new copy of Blood Bowl 2.0 or Blood Bowl 2nd Edition? Because I want to play it. It looks like fun. But Nobody cares about any of that stuff because they came out with a new box or they showed off the contents, some of the contents of the new box for Kill Team. And this is what I was super wrong about. I thought I was so smart. I thought I figured it all out, but uh, no, I was wrong. I, I suggested that, the, the, that this box would have, because it's, it's set on a Space Hulk and there was some shenanigans where Games Workshop showed off in the, with the bases, they accidentally let it slip that this was going to be Kazerkin versus Gene Stealers, like classic Space Hulk. I mean, classic Space Hulk was Terminators and Gene Stealers, but the Kazurkin are sort of the same thing. They're the Terminators of the Imperial Guard in a way. They're elites. But uh, I, know I was absolutely not expecting 
Imperial Navy Breachers, and the Crute Far Stalker Kin, ba kin Band. Crute Far Stalker Kin Band. Crute Far Stalker Kin Band. Crute Far Stalker. Crute Far Stalker Kin Band. Fruit. <laughs> Crute Far Stalker Kin Ban. Crute Far Stalker Kin Ban. Crute Far Stalker Kin. That's like a tongue twister. I don't know. I don't know what Games Workshop is thinking, whoever comes up with their names, but Crute Far Stalker Kin Ban is hard to say. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Ah, but they look cool. All these models look really, really cool. I'm not sad at all that it was that I was proven wrong because these models are awesome. It's great to get new Crute because Crute have not been touched for like 15 years. And so it's really cool to get some new models. I know there was one in Blackstone Fortress, but that was one. It was, and it, it felt like it was going to be a one-off and that they would never do anything more with the crew. So really excited to see this. But the Imperial Navy Breachers are sort of a whole new thing. The Imperial Navy show up all the time in novels because a lot of the novels are like jumping from planet to planet to planet. And on every single like spaceship of the Imperium is essentially their own private army of Imperial Navy, uh, Imperial Navy troops. You actually see a ton of them in the Warhammer TV show, um, Angels of Death, where like part, half the story is the Space Marines on the ground fighting the Gene Stealer. Spoiler alert, it's in the first episode. And then the other half of the story is the um, the, the ship captain and her Imperial Navy fighting the Gene Stealers who have snuck on board the spaceship. And I remember seeing those guys and being like, those are really cool. It'd be kind of neat to like kit bash some Tempesta Scions or some Cadian Guardsmen into those guys, but no. Kill Team is gonna give me exactly what I want in the Imperial Navy Breachers, and they look really cool. These guys are pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation of some old Warhammer artwork, and they're nice, they're neat. It'll be interesting to see how they play in Kill Team because there's kind of a lot of Imperial Guard in Kill Team. There's Compendium Guard with uh, Cadian Troopers and Tempesta Scions, and then there's the Veteran Guardsmen who are the Death Corps of Krieg, and then there's also the bloodied kill team, which is the traitor guardsmen. So we've kind of got guard on guard on guard on guard and a little bit a new Imperial Guard faction because these are essentially normal dudes. So hopefully they'll come up with some interesting way to make them very, very unique. One of them definitely seems very interesting. The, the guy with the big shield, it almost looks like a, a door off of a submarine and then he's got his shotgun kind of slotted in place. Kind of harkening back to a lot of the 30K, the 30K Breachers. Uh, really, really interesting. It's also interesting that they have shotguns, but Imperial Guard or just normal humans do not want to get close to stuff. And so it'll be interesting to see how the rules kind of facilitate needing to get close enough to use a shotgun while just not having your guys die left and right. Or maybe they do die left and right and this box is going to come with like 14 bodies. Probably not though, it's probably going to be 10 and 10. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always great when I make predictions. I'm gonna say that this box is gonna be 10 guys versus 10 guys. And that's always been true. I guess except for the orcs, there's like 12 models. But it's always been true, but I'm gonna be proven wrong. Maybe I should just start saying the opposite of what I want to happen. And then it'll come true. And then I still get what I want. Yeah, I really like the Imperial Navy Breachers. I think they're really cool. The paint job on them? Games Workshop. It's been a while since I painted something fun and different. I mean, Gene Stealer Cult are blue and white and metal. And then they came out with the Kin, the dwarves who are blue and white and metal. And then here are the Imperial Navy Be Breachers who are blue and white and metal. It's like they're just, it's like their default color scheme. Do something fun. These guys are kind of inspired by like Victorian era diving, diving bells or diving suits. And so I think it'd be really cool to paint them like bright, shiny copper and then put verdigris all over them, just like bright blue. I think that would look very neat. And that is how I will be painting up mine. And the Crute are cool too. Uh, what's really interesting is there's a Crute Hound and the Crute Hounds available from Games Workshop right now are old and they look bad. And they look so bad that you can't quite see what the crude hounds are supposed to look like. And what's interesting is tons of people have made their own crude hounds for like STLs and they kind of have invented the look of the crude hound. And then now that Games Workshop has made the, their crude hound, it's almost like the old model was like a blurry picture. And then the new model is a crit is like the, you know, the, they, you, you know, you, you zoomed in with the telescope and now you can actually see the model for real. And it looks kind of different than you'd expect. The back legs are very long. The front legs are kind of short. It has almost no neck. 
and its mouth isn't as beak-like as a lot of other people kind of thought it would look. It's a little bit more alligator toothy. It's, it's kind of an interesting look. I don't dislike it though. I think it looks really good. And I hope this box comes with a few of them. I bet it's not gonna be a few of them. I bet it's gonna be one model, kind of like the, uh, the single grot from the orc team. But I think it'd be cool to have three or four. In Kill Team, you can swap out four of your Crute Warriors for Crute Hounds. And Crute Hounds are actually the fastest unit in Kill Team, able to move eight inches naturally. So yeah, I really like these models. I'm excited for the new Kill Team. They're done with Tan Sand. Now, from now on, it looks like the next, the next four releases for Kill Team are probably all gonna take place on a Space Hulk. And it's gonna have modular terrain that stacks. I think they said that it's all going to work together, which is nice and hopefully will be sold separately, which it will be. I mean, if we all four of the previous releases have then afterwards had the terrain available separately. And so it'll be neat. Or you can just use whatever you want. Uh, some, some MDF stuff would be lovely. Yeah, looking good. Excited, excited for new kill team. And I bet, I bet we're going to see those cats who can come out in a different kill team box. Because why would the bases be exactly the same? I mean, now we've got, you know, an example of seven guys on flat bases that are painted gray with a little bit, you know, with some crumbs, some cookie crumbs on top. And that's exactly the base that the Kazurkin are standing on. How would that be the case? Like when Games Workshop comes out with the normal products for 40K, they're always based on brown earth with some green flock. But for the Kazurkin, they're on these types of bases. They're on the Space Hulk bases. So they must be for Kill Team. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, uh, uh, on Sunday, they showed off tons and tons of new stuff. And then like immediately afterwards, they were like, oh, by the way, here's another model for, here's another model for Blood Bowl, which makes me think it's impossible, but it makes me think a little bit that they forgot to mention this model during the live stream. <laughs> like the, the host just completely forgot. They accidentally skipped past it real quick. And so they came out with the, like a, a really cool, a really cool like hero for the Amazons, and it is a snake person. And what's kind of interesting about the snake person is he has arms, <laughs> which is weird, which is kind of weird for a snake person. I feel like it would have worked just as well. Like, you know, he's kind of doing the classic, like he's got the he's got the um, the football under his arm and he's running, but I feel like it would have worked just as well to have, you know, him this his little snake body up in the air and then his tail wrapped around the ball and you could keep it like on theme for a, a natural creature. But it still looks really cool and I like it a lot actually. I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind if there was like a faction of snake people. It, the model reminds me a ton of the vipers from XCOM. It's like, well I mean, it's, you know, it's not the world's most original idea, a snake person with arms, but it is just that's what it reminded me of. Oh my gosh, those guys are so frustrating in XCOM. They're not even like, they're like the easiest thing to defeat, but they never miss. Where they have their tongue attack where they can immobilize one of your guys and it never, ever misses. It's so frustrating. And they don't have a lot of health and they're easy to take out, but it's just like, oh, there's the Viper. They're gonna, they're gonna capture one of my models for a turn or two. I could see, I could see this model being used a lot in Seraphon armies for Age of Sigmar. I feel like it would slot right in perfectly. So yeah, Games Workshop showed off a lot of new plastic and it's all fine. It all looks really cool. But speaking of things that look really cool, last week I showed off these miniatures. They are Mars Attacks Martians from the now discontinued uh, Mantic game, Mars Attacks, the miniatures game. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I immediately turned on Mars Attacks and I painted up these guys while watching the movie and they're delightful. Ah, the, the box set came with 20 Martians and then 10 soldiers and 10 regular civilians. And I just love the Martians so much. Really, I painted them up just for the satisfaction of attaching these clear domes. These miniatures come with tiny, tiny vacuum formed clear domes. And it's just such a fun little detail that adds so much. I painted these guys up using some Army Painter Speed Paint, which I just love speed paint. I am getting tons and tons of great use out of it. And then I did more highlights on with normal acrylics. But really, I, I painted these guys up because I just I was so excited to have the opportunity to take that little dome and brush on just a little bit of Elmer's glue and just ever so carefully attach it. And now they're they're so great. Ah, I 
Love these guys. I can't wait to paint up the other 20. I've played this game. I got a game in with Lucky Bat. If, if, you, if any of you join the streams, you know that name. By the way, we live stream every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central. Come hang out. But uh, Lucky Bat destroyed me with the Martians. I played the soldiers and he played the Martians. Yeah, it was a rough game. But yeah, these guys, I love them so much. And the scale of these guys is interesting. So this is a Space Marine and it's in it's in it's in 28 millimeter Games Workshop's version of 28 millimeter. And I suppose these guys are probably in 72 and the Martians are very, very short in the movie and the comic books. They're very short. But man, there's just nothing to this guy. I was able to paint all of them in probably about four hours, but uh, there's just less surface area. And that kind of makes the difference in painting figures. Cause like, yeah, Space Marines, they're simple. Usually they're like one single color or like two colors, a base color and a highlight color. Whereas this guy's really complicated. I had to paint his backpack red. I had to paint his bodysuit green, paint all of his little, his little boots and gloves yellow. I had to paint like a brain on his skull. And then I picked out his teeth and eyes perfectly. And yet it took no time at all because there's just nothing there. He's a twig. And so somehow this model actually took significantly less time to paint than a typical space marine because there's just way less surface area. That's just, that's just something to keep in mind with painting miniatures. Like bigger, bigger is sort of better in terms of painting because, you know, if your first model is a space marine, it's probably going to look all right. But if, you're, if your very first paint job ever is one of these guys, it's going to be rough. You're going to have to have very, very steady hands when, you know, you're dotting those eyes. So I've got 10 Martians done, 10 more Martians to go. And then of course I've, I've eaten, I've eaten my dessert first and now I have to get through the regular soldiers and the humans so that I can have this game built and beautiful to, to play it every now and again. But really, really fun. Also Mars Attacks is a fun movie. I hadn't seen it since I was a little kid. It's a good movie. It's silly. It's weird, but really, really fun. And speaking of fun, that's right. Our Patreon. Over there, we have a miniature of the month club. This month, our new miniature is a futuristic elven warlock. We also have tons and tons of super cool terrain STLs. Like you can build dozens of boards at this point. We have so much terrain. You also get access to one extra episode of Eons of Battle a week. You get to vote on what models to paint live here on YouTube and more. It's the best way to support us. Oh, and we also have merch linked in the description. Ah, good old Mars attacks. I need to paint more aliens.